Good morning, everyone. We are so happy to be here with you this morning and just to share our story and share a little bit about what we've learned about the Hue and working with the Mahanta. You know, years ago when we became Ekist, we were told that there may be a day when we would look back and not even recognize ourselves. That's certainly been the case for me. I've had a few of those really amazing experiences that in a moment just is so transforming. But you know, mostly it's just been years of singing the hue and doing the spiritual exercises and opening myself to the love of the Mahanta that's really had the transforming effect. I know I just have a more open heart. I've learned to recognize myself as soul and I just trust in the inner guidance that I get. My life is just so full of joy and love now. And Steve, you've said that that transforming started for you even as a child. Yes, it did. And I needed a lot of transforming. <laughs> it's been such a journey. You see, I have five brothers. And when we were young, we were very competitive with each other. Um, we were manly boys. <laughs> Winning was the most important thing. Who could throw a ball the farthest? Who was the strongest? Who was the fastest? And as absurd as it sounds, who was the tallest? Well, I was good at being tall. <laughs> but I found that the joy of getting trophies or accolades from my peers never seemed to last. And there was nothing in that competitive nature that we indulged that taught me anything about love or compassion. In fact, love was just an emotional reaction to the way people treated me and with large doses of attachment and expectation on my part. It wasn't until I discovered the gift of the hue and began to follow that golden thread of love that I learned what winning really was about and started learning how to love. The hue is so amazing. It's my lifeline to the Mahanta and his guidance. It spiritualizes my dreams, in, in fact, my whole life. And in times of stress, it calms me. So I could sum it up by saying, the only thing the hue has done for me has transformed me and my life completely. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we all know that the act We'll use whatever means are necessary to help us have these experiences so we can get the transformation. And one of the things that we found that really has meant a lot for us in our life is the pets that we've had. Yes, and you can learn so much from pets. I've almost always had pets, but when I was young, I didn't know that pets were sold. In fact, I was told they didn't even have a soul. They were just animals. And I wish I had known the truth because I think it would have made a difference in the way I interacted with them. As Sri Harold says in Animals Are Sold Too, the best way to listen to our animal companions is to see them as soul. This means recognizing their eternal nature and knowing that God loves them just as much as God loves you. So when I joined Ekankar, I gained the knowledge that pets are soul but not the realization. That happened over time. For example, a little over 20 years ago, a friend offered us two young puppies. After checking in with the master, we found that it would be the best thing for us to do, so we took them in. And I did love them. We took good care of them, saw to all their needs, gave them affection, but it was not complete. It was as though I was loving them with my head rather than my heart. And Maggie has even commented that maybe that's one of the differences between human love and divine love. So eventually they got old and they passed away, which brings us to about three years ago when the Hugh or Eck opened a door for us where we really began to learn the true nature of soul 
and to bring more love into our lives. Aren't we all really just looking for more love in our lives? You know, as Steve said, these little dogs that we had, they got old and passed away, and we had also had cats, and it was the, that was the same thing for them. They got old and translated. And there were a few years where we just didn't have any pets. But I started getting a nudge that maybe it was time to have some kittens. And I ha actually had to talk Steve into it because he was still not completely sold on the idea. But I uh, got a couple of kittens from a friend. It was a boy and a girl. And oh my goodness, y'all know what kittens are like. They just bring so much love into your life. They're just so wonderful. And I must say, there was even a change in Steve. He was actually quite taken with them, yeah. so he was starting to open up. Well, when they were just about a year old, something happened to the little girl cat, and we were very, very sad. But we decided, let's just jump right back in and get another kitten. So we did. I found that this time a little boy cat, because we wanted our other cat to have a playmate. And that was all going great. We get to where the new cat was about a year old. Something happened to him, and he translated. Well, after that, I said out loud, if God wants us to have another cat or a pet, he's going to have to bring it to the house because I'm not getting another one. <laughs> well, I had no idea how prophetic that was going to turn out to be. <laughs> yeah. So, as Maggie was saying, losing the two cats, was it was sad, but we know that there's a spiritual reason behind everything that happens, and we try to make the most of, of it that we can. So during this time, I decided that I would add a new facet to my daily spiritual exercise. In order to dedicate myself and my home to the Mahanta, and to affirm for myself that it was all in the Mahanta's hands anyway, what I began to do was on the inner, I walk the fence line of our property, and I inwardly repeat the phrase, I live within a circle of divine love. I end that part of the exercise by thanking the Mahanta for his love, guidance, and protection. And in doing this, what I want to do is to make our home a welcome, loving place for anyone or anything that enters there. You may be getting a clue where this is going. Yeah, so early this year, we decided to go see this movie about the purpose of a dog. We had heard it was a good movie, very heartwarming, and it did, it turned out to be great. And little did we know that this turned out to be act one of our movie. Well, a couple of days later, act two starts, and we had just gotten home from our Eck worship service, which was entitled, A Time for Giving. We pull up into our driveway, and there's this little creature sitting there. I said, is that a dog? It looked like it could be a dog. Well, it turned out to be a dog, but Steve and I could tell right away that it needed urgent care. So. Without even going inside the house, I just put it in the car to take it to the emergency animal clinic. And as I was doing that, I said to Steve, you know what this means, we're gonna have to keep it. <laughs> well, it turned out to be a little male miniature poodle. And while I was in the clinic waiting for him while they were taking care of him, I got the image that his name was William or he could also be called Willie. Well, that's what we call him, Willie. And he was, he was very sick. It seemed that he had been neglected for a very long time, and he actually needed to have surgery. So we brought him, we had surgery, and then we get into this, um, you know, chaotic period where he's recuperating. He's trying to learn how to get along with the cat. But right away, within that first week that we had him, Steve and I both had a dream of uh, he and the cat either playing together or licking, eating out of the same dish. So we knew everything was going to be okay, but we still had to go through it. And that brings us to Act 3, 
transformation, and resolution. Willie is the picture of health. He's the most wonderful little thing that has ever happened. Um, he is just such a joy, and we're just so in love with him. But you know how sometimes when everything is going great, you still might ask, what's the golden thread? Why are these experiences happening, and how do they connect? Well, one, one reason was about a year ago, I developed what I called age-related high blood pressure. And I didn't really know what to do for it, but I would, you know, sit there with my blood pressure cuff and check my blood pressure and sing the hue, and it would go down a little bit, but not all the way. But my blood pressure is sky high right now, I can tell you that. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but after Willie came, my blood pressure returned to normal. And, yeah. I, and the, the other thing was I had gotten on this uh, walking routine of three or four times a week whenever it was convenient. But now that we have Willie, we walk every day, sometimes three times a day. And I just know in my heart that that's one of the reasons that he came was for me and so many other reasons. Well, it even strengthened our relationship because I don't, I don't know how it is for other couples, but for Maggie and myself, it's always been a sort of dance because even though we're a couple, we're still individuals and our spiritual unfoldment doesn't always happen exactly on the same schedule. So one of us is often having to catch up with the other. Mm -hmm. And that's where we were when Willie showed up. And the common purpose of taking care of Willie and monitoring his exposure to the dog and, I mean, to the cat, mm -hmm. it, it made us better co-workers. Yeah. And... <laughs> Thank you. I've, I've found that working with the hue and taking hold of that golden thread of love has made it necessary for me to learn to see the difference between the things I want and the gifts of soul. And adopting Willie was a perfect example of that. We've all heard the expression, thy will, not my will. Well, I have to say honestly that when, when Maggie was saying we have to keep him, my mind was racing into the future of all the thousands of dollars we might have to spend and, you know, what was it going to take to take care of him? Would it be a long-term thing? But at the same time, from the perspective of soul, I knew that I was witnessing a miracle because that soul in that little dog body with his last bit of strength had uh, made his way into the Mahanta circle of divine love. And he was home, and he would be loved and cherished for every moment for the rest of his life. There was never a doubt about that. <laughs> and that brings us to now. Um, a better relationship with Maggie, the best it's ever been. And the sweetest, most well-behaved little dog who is love and joy on four legs. Um, sometimes it, it brings me to tears just watching him live. People, dog lovers, occasionally will say to us, oh, thank you for adopting Willie. But I think we got the greater gift. I really do. I'm, I'm so glad to have had the opportunity to share this story with you, and I want to say there's one last thing, and it's pretty miraculous too, because love is not an emotion anymore. It's not a reaction or a response to anything. It's what I am, and that's what the hue has done for me. I bet y'all's hearts are just as full as ours are.
It's just been such an honor to be here and to be able to share this story with you. You know, we couldn't give you all of the details of Willie's rescue, but it really was a miracle, the timing of it all. But it was just an example of one, all the many miracles that the Mahanta and learning and of singing the hue and doing our daily spiritual exercises, our lives are just so rich and full. It's of, a wonderful life. It is a wonderful life. <laughs> So let us leave you with this quote. This is from Sri Harold Klimp, The Living Word, Book Two. Hugh is love's golden thread, drawing soul closer to God, like an infant to its parent, or in our case, like a dog to its people. So sing Hugh, open yourself to divine love. Watch for these golden threads of love that weave through your life. See what greater love the hue has in store for you. Thank, Thank you. you.